so this, we're covering the um, second part of chapter nine. And I do want to just review the bond section again before we start talking about um, when we dispose of bonds. Okay. This can be one of the hardest chapters in this course. But as we talked about last week, if you get the grasp that that stated interest rate really only means figuring out the payment. So you take the um, face value of the bond times that stated interest rate times half a year. You know, if they get paid twice a year, that's the only thing that stated interest rate is good for. Otherwise, you're going to use the market interest rate. Remember what I when we talked about that? Okay, so I'm going to go down here to bonds. And we're going to start here, if that is okay with you guys. Um, so for bonds, bonds are used when a company um, or a corporation or um, you hear of bonds a lot with um, school districts or cities when they want to fund a big project they will sell bonds so it's a way for them to finance their particular venture so it's a formal debt instrument which means it's signed and it spells out the principal rate the the principal or the face amount the maturity date, and what we call the stated interest rate, which just is a number on that, that um, bond paper that shows the amount that gets paid back twice a year. We talked about various types of bonds. You may see a multiple choice on your quiz about this, but that's not my big concern. My bigger concern is that you understand how you complete an amortization schedule and how we figure out the interest. You know, what is the loan, the bond amount at that time and how we calculate the interest rate. So what we were doing is we spent a lot of time talking about how the market rate can vary right now. And the, the interest rates have never been higher in the past 22 years. Of course, right now my son is buying a home for the first time at 39. And it's a bummer the interest rates are at 8% when we got a home three years ago at a 3% interest rate. Bummer. But it's just the market rate fluctuates. Because of the fact that the market rate fluctuates, the way we value a bond, or what, what we call the issue price of the bond, is based on how the stated rate versus the market rate is different. So we talked about when we have a market rate that's greater than just that number on that piece of paper, when the market rate will bear more will give you more than what this, the piece of paper shows. We're always going to buy that bond or issue that bond for less than the face value because it's a way they make up that interest. Does that make sense? So no, guys, when the market rate is greater than what the stated rate shows on that piece of paper, the bond, the bonds will always issue at a discount, which means below the face amount. When the stated rate is less, excuse me, when the market rate is less than the stated rate what's on the piece of paper, the bonds will always issue at a premium. Okay? Because you're only going to get what the market will bear. So if the stated rate that's on the piece of paper shows you're going to get more than what the market's willing to bear, you're going to have to pay more for that bond. Okay? So that is the key to understand. Let that stated rate 
concept. No, it's just what's on that piece of paper, but it's the market rate we really care about. So we spent some time looking at the tables that I couldn't find last week that I now found. Um, and we can calculate the present value or the issue price of the bonds based on if we know the market rate and we know the number of periods. Now, guys, number of periods doesn't mean the number of years. The number of periods, if we get paid twice a year, that's two periods a year. Got it? So, in a case, and we'll look at some problems, where the payment is twice a year, which generally they are, and it's over 10 years, then that means there's 20 periods. Okay? So, the big focus on is if the stated rate is the same as the market rate, then it's easy. What the face amount is, is what the bonds are going to issue for. But when the stated rate is less than the market rate, bonds are going to issue at a discount. Okay? And guys, just write that down. You know, sometimes having those notes is helpful so you understand. Okay, if the market rate's greater, that means the bonds will always issue below the face amount at a discount. So what I want to do is I want to go over some problems, okay? So you guys are sure it's okay that I do some homework problems. Remember, page 237 has this tables, and we'll go over some problems. So, let's look at this problem here, number, it's called number 15. The following information applies to the questions below. If the market, okay, sorry, Twister Enterprises, a manufacturer of a variety of transportable spin rides, issues $600,000 of 8% bonds, bless you, due in 20 years with interest payable semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. Let's just try to break this apart. What is that 8% called? The stated rate, right? And guys, if it's 20 years and they're getting paid twice a year, how many periods is that? 40. Guys, don't mess that up. So many people just think number of years, and then they're going to get it wrong, okay? Because they're going to say 20 periods, not 40 periods. I'm trying to tell you where you're going to mess up, okay? Now, guys, if the market interest rate is 7% and the stated rate is 8%, what does that mean to you? The bonds are going to be issued at a premium, aren't they? Because the market rate is less than the stated rate. Okay? Now, they're telling us the bonds are going to issue at $664,000, 664065 What I want to do, though, so you understand, is figure out how we know that. Okay? So let's just figure out how we know that. So how do we figure that out? The information says $600,000 8% bonds. So guys, 600,000, 8% is the stated rate. All that means is how much our payment is going to be, right? And if our, our payment is going to be the 600,000 times the 8% divided by 
divided by two because we get paid twice a year. Does that make sense? Yes? So won't we get 24000 twice a year? Right? So to figure out the issue price, guys, in this example, they gave it to us, but I want you to understand how they figured it out. Do you say, see it says the market rate is 7% and the number of periods is how many? 40. So we are going to go where the market rate, table two, um, it's 40 years. And what did I just say it was? 7%. It's way over here. Do you see where I'm looking at? Market rate is 7%, 40 periods. Do you see it says, excuse me, that, no, not table one, table two, present value of a dollar. 7%, 40 periods. Do you see this number says 0 0.06678? Okay, we're going to take this 600,000, so the present value of a dollar, which means a lump sum. So we're going to take the 600,000 times 0. Point, of course, I can't remember. 0. 0.06678. Is that right? 40 periods, 7% interest rate, the current value of that 600,000, does that sound right? 600,000 times 0 0.06678 is 40,068, okay? Now we have to figure out the present value of all those $24,000 payments for 40 periods right? So we now need to go over to table four, where it's called the present value of an ordinary annuity. What that means is what's the present value of $24,000 payments for 40 periods, okay? It's not one lump sum, it's a bunch of $24,000 for 40 periods. Does that make sense? That's why we call it an annuity. It's a series of payments. We're going to look at 7%, right? Isn't it 7%? Times 40 periods. 7%, 40 periods is here. Is this right? The 16? Let me just. 16.04. No, 7%. Ah! Is it this one? 12.9? One more down? This 13.33171? Yeah. 13.33171. Do you see how I got to it, guys? Okay, so now we're going to take the present value of an annuity, present value of um, a series of payments, okay? And we're going to take this 24,000 times, what, what did I call it, 13 point, 13.33171. Do you see that's 319,961? So if I add those two together, I don't think I'm right. Seven percent. So I the bonds, the market rates at 7%. I had 600,000. So 600,000, this just doesn't sound right. 
times 0 0.06678. That number can't be right. Let me go back to it. Table 2, 7%, 40 periods, 0 0.06678, and I use present value of a dollar, 7%, 0 0.06678, 600,000 times 0 0.06678. It's got to be 400 is equal this times 0 0.06678. What am I doing wrong? Present value of a dollar. What am I doing wrong? 40 periods, 7% present value of a buck, which is what I want. 7%. 7%. 40 periods, 0 0.006678. But if I total those, it's only 319. So here's what I'm going to do different. Let's go to the formulas. Let's go to financial. The rate is 3.5%, right? Twice, 7% uh, annually. The number of periods is 40. The payment is 24,000. The future value is 600,000. 664.065.22. What am I doing wrong? That is the Excel way to figure it out. That is correct. I'm doing something wrong with this present value. Let me just make sure. 600,000, present value of a dollar, 7%, number of periods, 40. I'm doing the right table. I don't know what I'm doing wrong there, guys. I I will let you know. I'm so sorry. I'm messed up here. But technically, you should be able to do exactly what I'm doing. Use Table 2 and Table 4 to figure out, and then you add the two together. Something's off with this number, 600,000 times that 0 0.066. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But do you see it with Excel? I got it right. We'll try it again. So going back here to this homework, they don't want you to figure out the 664, but I was trying to help you see how to figure it out. If I do it through Excel, I got it right. My guess is something's wrong with that table too, which let me, um, present value of a dollar table. Uh, PDF, present value tables. So I've got 7%. There, This only goes to 30 periods. Somehow something's goofy with that table. Yes? Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing wrong. I am so sorry. I'm taking, I need to take 3.5%, not 7%. Guys, would y'all believe that was a, um, purpo on purpose? No. 3.5%. Remember I told you to split it? So what is 3.5%, um, 3.5% 40 periods? Let's go back to that. I am so sorry. 3.5%. Uh, that matter. 3.5%, 40 periods, is 
0 0.25257. Equal this times 0 0.25257. That gives us 151.542. Then the annuity, I think you should get extra credit for helping me. The annuity, 3.5% for 40 years. Uh, is it 25.10? No, 3.5% is this one 21.35507 this one will be 3.5507 is that what I said times 24,000 no. what did I do wrong there Twenty-one point three five five zero seven. Okay. Twenty-one. Twenty-one point three five five zero seven. And then you add them up. Six sixty-four. Hey guys, I'm teaching you what not to do, right? You see how I screwed up? I used the annual rate, not the um, the period rate. Thank you. Okay. So, despite my screw-up, you learn how it screwed us up. So, you should be able to look at those charts, take the period interest rate, you use Table 2 for the, the whole amount, and for the present value of an annuity, you use Table 4, and, unlike what I just did, use the interest rate per period, not annual. Got it? Yes, no? Okay. So that helps you understand how you can calculate it. But in this case, it tells us the bonds will issue at 664.065. Record the bond issue on January 1st and the first two semi-interest payments on June 30th, 2024 and December 31st, 2024. So the cash we're going to get is 664.065, right? Cash, 664.065. This will be a premium on bonds payable of 64.065, right? And bonds payable is 600,000, isn't it? Right? Make sense? Then what we want to do is create an amortization schedule because that's just the way it helps me. So we'll have cash paid. We'll have interest rate or interest premium face amount or uh, current value face value. Okay. And this is 664.065. What is the amount that we get each uh, period is 24,000? The interest rate, isn't that going to be the 664.065 times 0.035 or 0.7%? The interest is twenty three thousand two forty two twenty eight. Do you see, guys, that the interest is less than what we're actually getting paid? So that's the premium. This premium is going is going to lower the bond payment. So. After the first payment, now the new face amount on the bond is sitting at 663,307 and 30 cents. Does that make sense? 
Yes? So the first journal entry will show interest of 23,242.28. The cash is 24,000. The interest expense is 23,242.28, right? And the premium on bonds payable is 757.73. Or 758. Does that make sense, guys? What we're doing? Yes? No? Then, guys, they want us to do the next journal entry. The next journal entry record the second semi annual interest payment. I go back here. Now we this is this is the first payment. The second period, the cash is going to be what? 24,000. The interest is going to be the face amount times 7%. Three and a half. Boy, I'm not going to live that one down. So now we've got the difference between the interest and the payout is 784.24. Do you see that our new face amount is going to go down by that amount? Does that make sense? So for the second journal entry, 23,216 is the interest. 23,216. The premium on the bond payable is going to be the 784. Does that make sense, guys? How we're figuring that? Yes? Now I'm scared I'm doing it wrong, so I gotta check my work. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Okay? Do you wanna do another one? Is this helpful? The following information applies to the questions displayed below. On January 1st, 2024, Vacation Destinations issues 40 million of bonds that pay interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. Portions of the bond amortization appear below. It's asking us, so guys, we know they're $40 million bonds. Can we see what the face of, what the issue price is or the carrying value? Do you see what it says? So does that mean they were issued at face amount? No, because face amount would have been 40, wouldn't it? Weren't they issued at a discount because they're less than 40 million? Okay. So were the bonds issued at face amount, discount, or a premium? They were issued at a discount, weren't they? Right? What is the original issue price of the bonds? What do you think? The issue price is the same as the initial carrying value. Remember, 40 is the face amount of the bonds. 
the issue price was thirty-seven thousand million, thirty-seven million two eighty-one nine thirty-five, right? Does that make sense? Then, what is the face amount of the bonds? Forty. Guys, do you see why we're going through this? I want you to understand the lingo, the, the, the definitions, the wording, because this is what they're going to ask you on a test. Guys, it tells us Vacation Destinations issues 40 million of bonds that pays interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. It asks us what is the stated annual interest rate. Now hear me out. Don't freak out. The stated annual interest rate is the face amount times that stated annual interest rate divided by 2 gives us the 1,400,000, doesn't it? Right? So wouldn't it be safe to say 40 million divided by 1,400,000 What am I doing wrong? Divided by 1,400,000. No, I'm going to do 1,400,000 divided by 40 million. Okay? Sorry, I did it backwards. How much is the period interest rate? 3.5%. But it didn't ask us for the period interest rate. What did it ask us for? The annual, what would that be? 7%. Okay? Do you see what I'm trying to help you understand is terminology. If it asked us what was the period interest rate, what would it be? Three and a half percent. Be careful what they're asking you. Okay? Does that make sense? Guys, now it asks, what is the market annual interest rate? How would we figure this out? Isn't the market rate, guys, wouldn't it be the carrying value of 37,281,935 times the market rate gives us the 1,491,277, right? So couldn't we take 1,491,277 divided by the carrying value to find out our period interest rate? right? The period market rate, and then we'd have to compute it to an annual rate. What would that be, guys? Am I making sense? Eight percent? So one million four ninety one 277, 1 million, whoops, wrong one, divided by 37,281,935. The period rate is 4% market rate. What would it be annually? Does that make sense, guys?
Okay. It's telling us on January 1st, 2024, Vacation Destinations issues 40 million of bonds that pay interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. Portions of the bond amortization appear below. What is the total cash paid for interest assuming the bonds mature in 10 years? Think about it. If the bonds mature in 10 years and we get paid twice a year, bless you, and we get paid twice a year, how much are we getting paid each period? 1,400,000, right? And if they are maturing in 10 years and we get paid twice a year, how many periods is that? Wouldn't 1,400,000 times 20 show what we're receiving? No, it's everything. It's paying back the bonds and the interest. But how much are the bonds? 40 million, right? So wouldn't the difference be the interest? Got it? So 1,400,000, 1,400,000 times 20 periods is 28 million. If I take that, subtract the 40 million, am I doing it right? So wouldn't 1 million or 120 million be the interest? So 1 million 400,000 times 20 periods is that number. That subtracted by 40 million would give us what? Anybody? 12 million? This is just the interest. So 1 million 400,000 times 20 periods. 1,400,000 times 20 periods is how much we're receiving over the life. That amount minus our 40 million, which is what the bonds were, right? Should be 120 million should be the interest. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Oh, that's for interest. Well, this, this was the, uh, this is the cash paid. So this is the payment each month, 1,400,000. Uh, how about this? Exit now. I'm going to do my home. That was like number 20. So, 21... Twenty-eight. Okay, what is 1,400,000 times 20 payments? Okay, so I was wrong. I'm trying to figure out the, what I'm trying to do is take the total payments, subtract it from the bond. But 
I get what you're saying. I, I was screwing up on my thinking here. It's what the payments are. Your payments are the 1,400,000 times 20 payments. That's what they want to give you. I'm trying to take the whole amount you're going to receive, subtracting it from the bonds, which is not what this is showing. The payments we're going to get are 1,400,000. Okay? Does that make sense? Next. When we do the amortization schedule on January 1st, Universe of Fund issues 900,000 8% bonds that mature in 10 years. The market interest rate for bonds of similar risk and maturity is 9%. And the bonds issue for 841, 464. Interest is paid semi annually on June 30th and December 31st. It then asks us, I got, it. yeah, I, I was screwing up assuming the bonds, I, I'm adding the bonds plus the interest. That's where I screwed up on the last one. Here's what they're getting paid every six months. So to create the amortization schedule, they're giving us the, the carrying value. But if they didn't give us that carrying value, guys, we should be able to figure it out by figuring out that the 900,000 times 4% is what the payment is every six months. We know that um, face amount is 900,000. We know the periods are 20 periods and the market rate per period is 4%, right? So we should be able to go in here. So we should be able to go in here and show the rate of 4% Number of periods, 20. Payment is 36000 And it's going to be a $900,000 bond, right? What did I do wrong? Present value. The rate is um, 8% is the stated rate. What's the market rate, guys? 9%. So we want to show here the rate, 4.5, 20 periods, 36,000, 900,000. What did I do wrong? 900,000, 36,000, 4.5 percent, point oh four five, twenty periods, 36,000, 900,000, There it goes. Eighth time's a charm. Okay? Does that make sense how you could figure it out if they don't give it to you? So, we take the carrying value. We know the cash paid is going to be consistent. The interest expense is the carrying value times the market rate times half of the year. And then the difference, in this case, this is the discount on bonds payable. And when it's a discount, it gets added to the bonds, right? Got it? Then for the next payment period, it's going to be the new carrying value of 843,330 times 
the 4.5%. And that difference is going to be discount on bonds payable. That will increase the carrying value. Remember, when there's a discount on bonds payable, the issue price is lower. But by the time of maturity, the bonds are going to equal the face amount, aren't they? Got it? Yes, no? Any questions? Have I confused you even more? Or hopefully that was a learning experience. What not to do? Okay, so we went through these problems. We learned how to record them. Now what we're going to talk about is disposing of bonds. Okay. How do we record the disposition of bonds? Bond retirements occur when the issuing corporation buys back its bonds from the investors. Assume 100,000 in bonds are retired at maturity. That's easy. When they retire at maturity, piece of cake. So when they retire at maturity, you would debit the bonds payable, but get rid of the, the um, liability and credit your cash. Okay? There's no gain or loss because you, you paid them off at maturity. That was the agreement. But what happens if a bond is retired before maturity? Now, why would this happen? It may happen because interest rates are going down. Think about it. What if a company issued bonds at an 8% interest rate but our market's down at 5%. Why would they keep paying 8% when they can get money cheaper? Does that make sense? So they would want to retire them if they can ahead of time so they can get better financing. So in this case, California Coasters issued bonds on January 1st, 2018, above the face amount at a premium of 107000 439. The carrying value of the bonds one year later on December 31st, 2018 is 106,877. Guys, it's telling you what the carrying value is. Record the bond retirement before maturity on December 31st, 2018 for 114,000. 353. So guys, it's letting us know that these bonds were issued at a premium. Okay? It's letting us know the bonds were issued at a premium. It's letting us know what the current carrying value is when the bonds were retired. And it's letting us know how much cash we had to pay to mature to retire these bonds so my guess is the true face amount was a hundred thousand of the bonds right which means the premium when they initially took it out was seven thousand four thirty nine now a year later we see it's one oh six eight seventy seven right so to record the retirement, we're going to show our cash is at the 114,353. We need to zero out the bonds. We need to zero out what the premium is left over, and we can see what it is. If at that moment it was 106,877, doesn't that mean the premium was 6,877? And the difference is going to be either a gain or loss. The difference between what we paid in cash versus what 
the bond payable issue um, carrying value is. In this case, California Coasters records a loss for the difference between the price paid to repurchase the bonds and the bonds carrying value for 106877. Right? But guys, do you see how we needed to zero it out? We needed to zero out the bonds and we also needed to zero out the premium. Hey guys, it's annoying. I'm sorry. If y'all can refrain from talking, it's annoying me, so I'm, I apologize, but it's annoying. No gain or loss is recorded on bonds retired at maturity. But for bonds that are retired before maturity, we record a gain or loss on early extinguishment equal to the difference between the price paid to repurchase the bonds and the bonds carrying value. Does that make sense? What do you guys think of this one? Try this one. What do y'all think? The company retires a $50 million bond issue before maturity when the carrying value is $48 million. So what's the carrying value of the bonds right now? $48 million. We had to pay $54 million to retire them. Okay? We had to pay more. So isn't that going to show we lost money? Because they're currently valued at 48, but we had to give them 54. Okay? Let's look at this. On January 1st, 2018, Splash City issues 500,000 of 9% bonds due in 20 years with interest payable semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. The market interest rate on the issue date is 10%, and the bonds issued for 457102 Using an amortization schedule, show that the bonds have a carrying value of 458633 on December 31st, 2019. You may need to calculate out what is the carrying value on the bonds at this certain date. And the only way to do that is to create an amortization schedule to where you need it to be at. Okay? So what we're doing here, it's telling us they issued for 457102. Was this a premium or a discount? Discount. Why? The stated rate is lower than the market rate, and you're exactly right. And also, guys, you know how I can see it? If the bonds are 500000 and we issued them for four fifty-seven, dollars wasn't it below? It was below. So that's how we know it was a discount. Okay? So the first row on the amortization schedule shows our 457102 which is the carrying amount, times the market rate times half the year. So if the market rate is at 10%, but 
but half the year is 5%. So 457,102 times 5% is 22,855. The difference between the cash we paid of 225 minus the interest, it's a difference of $355. We're going to add that now to the carrying value of the loan, or the bond, aren't we? So now the interest is going to be calculated on the 457,102 plus the 355 or 457, 457. Now for the second period, it's 457, 457 times 5%. That's 22,873. Now the difference between what was paid and the interest expense, that adjustment of 373 gets added again to the carrying value of the, the bond. So we continue to do that, and then after two years or four payments, do you see how we can tell our carrying value is the 458,633? Yes? Does that make sense, guys? Anybody have questions? If the market interest rate drops to 7% on December 31st, it will cost 601452 to retire the bonds. Record the retirement of the bonds on December 31st, 2019. So guys, it's telling us on December 31st, 2019, we're going to have to pay 601452 to get rid of these, this bond that is sitting with a carrying value of 458633 Does that make sense? Okay, so right now we know the carrying value is 458633 but we're going to have to pay cash of 601452 right? So wouldn't we show our cash of 601452 wouldn't we have to show if we're at for what was it 58633 we've got to zero out the bonds payable we have to zero out the discount to come up with our 458633 and the difference is either going to be a loss or a gain isn't it does that make sense Yes? No? Okay. Do you understand why that amortization schedule is so important, though? So you can figure out where the, what the carrying value is on a specific date? I'm going to let you guys do your debt analysis piece on your own, because remember, in Chapter 12, we're going to go over all these while we're eating bagels. But let's look at some more problems. I think that's the best way to make it make sense to you. Okay? So, Let's look at problem 9-5. Viking Voyager specializes in the design and production of replica Viking boats. On December 1st, 2024, the company issues $3 million of 9% bonds due in 10 years. 
with interest payable semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st each year. If the market interest rate is 9%, the bonds will issue at $3 million. Now guys, what is the stated rate? 9%. That's easy, isn't it? There's no premium or discount. So in this case, they want us to record the bond issue on January 1st, 2024, and the first two semi-interest payments on June 30th, 2024, and December 31st, 2024. So, the three million, wouldn't we show the journal entry would be cash, of three million and bonds payable three million and our amortization the amount of the payment the cash payment is what nine percent and we get paid twice a year so wouldn't it be the cash payment is going to be the three million times four and a half percent right and isn't the interest rate going to be the exact same right there's no premium or no discount right so wouldn't the journal entry each period be interest expense of, shoot, where is it? What was four and a half times three million? 120,000? Hundred and thirty-five thousand, and isn't our cash a hundred thirty-five thousand? And the next payment won't it be the exact same thing, right? Okay, now I want you guys to attempt this next one. If the market interest rate is ten percent, the bonds will issue at two million eight hundred thirteen thousand oh sixty-seven. Record the bond issue on January 1st, 2024, and the first two semi-interest payments on June 30th and December 31st. Okay? Can we take a minute and try to do that? I'm going to run to the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. Got it? Attempt this, guys. You guys can work together, too.
So guys, what would be the journal entry to record it? Cash, two million, eight thirteen. Uh huh. Okay, I'm sorry, one second. What is it? Thank you. And bonds payable? Did I do that right? I know. Do you guys agree with that? So now the interest rate is at 5% each period. So I, again, I just do my amortization schedule. 2,813,067, 2,813,067. And how much is the payment amount? 435, 135. And the interest rate, did I say is eight or nine? Oh, market rate is 10%. Is so if the market rate is 10%, wouldn't we take this amount times 5% because it's per period? And the difference of the, the, um, the 5,653, wouldn't we add that? Or excuse me, add that? So we would add that to the loan balance. Then wouldn't we do the same thing the next time around? We would take the current amount, carrying value, times the 5%. And we would come up with the current carrying value. So wouldn't that first journal entry be interest expense would be fourteen hundred forty thousand six fifty three. The cash amount is a hundred and thirty five thousand. So wouldn't this be a discount? on bonds payable of what? Wouldn't it be the difference? One thousand? Thank you. Does that make sense, guys? And then the next journal entry is going to be similar. We just are going to take the next line. The interest is for 140.936. The discount is the 5,936. And wouldn't the cash payment be? Make sense? Are you guys doing okay with that? Okay, let's look at another one. Let's look at this one. <coughs> Temptation Vacations issue 60 million. Or did, we did this one, didn't we? We did. The key here is to know what is the face amount. The face amount is what's shown on that piece of paper, the bond paper. Okay? What is the face amount here? 60 million, right? What is the original issue price? 66, 934. What is the face amount? 60 million. What is the stated interest rate? Wouldn't we take the 2,100,000 divided by 60 million to come up with what that stated rate is per period? And then we'd multiply it times 2 to get up with the annual rate. 
Make sense? Okay, let's see. We'll go back to um, amortization. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is look at the homework or the quiz so you understand. See, so a lot of these are filling in amortization schedules, okay? Here, this is what I want you to look at. Share it company retires its 7% bonds, having a face amount of $70,000 for $68,000 before their scheduled maturity. At the time, the bonds have a carrying value of $74,937. Record the early retirement of the bonds. How would we do that, guys? What did we give cash for? How much was the cash we gave? Anybody? It says we retired the 7% bonds having a face amount of 70000 for 68000 So how much did we give cash for? 68000 didn't we? It tells us at this time the bonds have a carrying value of 74,937. So guys, right away, were these bonds issued at a premium or a discount? Premium, how do we know? Because it's greater than the 70,000, isn't it? Right? So if we want to show a journal entry for this, what are we going to do? We're going to show we paid cash out of 68000 right? What are our bonds payable at? 70? What is our premium at? Four thousand nine thirty seven. Looks like we have a gain here, don't we? We sold it for less So wouldn't that be six thousand nine thirty seven? make sense? How are you guys doing? Yes, no. <coughs> Look at this one. Michelangelo's Craft Center issues 5% eight-year bonds with the face amount of 100,000. The market interest rate for bonds similar of similar risk of maturity is 6%. Interest is paid semi-annually. Let's first start. What is the stated rate? 
Perfect. What, how many periods? 16. So, is this going to be issued at a premium or a discount? If the market rate, right, if the market rate is greater than the stated rate, then we're going to issue them at a discount, right? So, at what price will the bonds be issued? Let me try to redeem myself. We've got the, what is the payment they're going to receive every six months? Two thousand five hundred, right? Two thousand five hundred. So what we can go to the tables. I'm a little scared to do it, but we're going to try. And we are going to figure out what the bonds will be issued for. Sixteen periods. The market rate per period is three percent, right? So three percent. For 16 periods at 100,000, uh, what page was it? 240. Thank you. matter. That's where it is. So table two, present value of a dollar. What did I say? 3% 16 periods. The factor here is 0 0.62317, right? 0 0.62317. Zero point six two three one seven times a hundred thousand. The present value of that lump sum is sixty two thousand three seventeen. What did we say the payment amounts were? Twenty five hundred. We'll go to the other chart, chart four, table four. At 3% times 16 periods, and we see 12.56110 times 2,500, right? Wouldn't we add those two together? Should it be 93,719.75 or 93,720? Right? But let's just make sure the rate is 3%, 16 periods, 2,500. The value is 100,000. Ninety three seven nineteen. Now, guys, do you see we're off a couple cents? Do you see how this one said forty five cents? This one said seventy five cents. Um, if you get a problem wrong because you're off by a dollar, please email me. I'm not going to count that. Okay. So ninety three seven twenty would be the amount. Right? Does that make sense? Now, guys, they did say not to use, do you see how they say use a financial calculator or Excel? So I think with my Excel, it would be 93,720. No, 93,719. So 
I'm going to, the numbers can be a, a dollar off just because those tables only go out so many decimal places. But let me know. I'm not going to give you a hard time over a buck, okay? Those are ratios. Uh, ratios. What about this one, guys? A bond issue with a face amount of 497000 bears interest at the rate of 7%. The current market rate is 8%. These bonds will sell at a price that is equal to 497000 Yes or no? no. <laughs> More than 497000 No. Less than 497000 right? And we can determine it because they give us what we want, the stated rate and the market rate. We know if the stated rate is less than the market rate, they're going to be issued at a discount, right? A bond issued at a discount indicates that at the date of issue, the bonds must be non-interest bearing? No. The bonds were issued at a price greater than the face amount? No. The stated rate was higher than the prevailing market rate? No. Its stated rate was lower than the prevailing market rate? Yes. Guys, do you understand why it's important to, to know these concepts and these definitions? And I'm trying to teach you what's the stated rate, what's the market rate, what's the face amount, what's the carrying amount. Do you see? Because you're going to have questions like this. Okay? Given the information below, which of these bonds will be issued at a discount? Who said one and three? Perfect. Why? Because the stated rate is less than the market rate. Okay? Got it? Are you feeling okay with this? Guys, the other chapters are fairly easy compared to this. And this doesn't have to be hard. It's just there's a lot of concepts to grasp. How's everyone doing? Good? Do you think you can handle the homework and the quiz? Great. Now, guys, work together. 